Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today I want to talk about a topic that will really make gardening easier for you. You're going to have better transplants, you're going to establish and grow more quickly, and you're going to have to spend less time taking care of your indoor seed starts. The concept is not new, it's just not talked about a whole lot, and it is easy to understand, but sometimes it's hard to explain. We're going to use tomatoes, planting tomato transplants as the example, but today I want to talk about soil temperature. This is a chart that I made. We're going to go over how to make the chart. I've had this sitting at my desk for three years. It is actually in my new book. I really believe that this makes a big difference with respect to getting the transplants into the ground. Let me talk about soil temperature and why that really matters. The whole concept is based on getting your transplant into the right temperature soil. Cool weather crops, they can go into cooler soil. Your warm crops, like tomatoes, need to go into warmer soil. Cold soil just shuts the plants down. These transplants, these tomato plants, aren't even, I don't think, three weeks old yet. If I transplant these at this size into the soil here in Maryland Zone 7, say May 1st, they're going to accelerate and grow quickly and catch up to tomato plants that may be this large that I grew inside for eight weeks or nine weeks, put out in middle of April, how to protect them from frost. Because that soil is colder in April, these plants, yes, they're bigger. I spent a lot of time growing them indoors, more time than I needed to. They're just gonna sit there. They might even turn purple. So putting out a large transplant into the wrong soil doesn't mean you're gonna get produce quicker. Doesn't mean that tomato plant's gonna, you know, produce tomatoes sooner than something that's only three weeks, maybe four weeks old, put into the right soil temperature. And just to be clear, I would put these in beginning of May, middle of May, they're going to grow really quickly because they're in warm soil and they're going to catch up very quickly to these transplants that I grew in indoors for, you know, eight weeks, put outside early, had to protect from frost, and I didn't really benefit. There's no big benefit there except maybe you know, they look better, but I put more effort and time into growing them under grow lights. They took up space, and then when I got them into the soil, they just sat there. So this coffee stain and all is what I use to kind of plan my warm crops and cool crops, and it's in my book, Growing an Edible Landscape. But I want to use what I keep right here at the desk. It's pretty straightforward to set up. You have to go online anywhere just search average day temperature January Maryland average nighttime temperature January Maryland and you just build out your chart like this so you know coming right up here January here Maryland average day temps are 43 average night temps are 25 February 46 during the day 27 at night and as we progress forward we see the soil temperatures are getting into the 50s well the nighttime temperatures are getting into the 50s. I'll talk about the soil temperature in a second. So first half of April, it's probably going to be closer to 44 degrees. Second half of April, the temperatures are probably warmer, closer to 50 degrees. You want your tomato plants, your warm weather crops, really going out into soil, that top two, four, six inches, when it's in the 50s, upper 50s, even 60 degrees. So this tells me May is a great time to put in the tomato transplants. Maybe you know, towards the end of April. Anytime sooner, I'm getting out these large plants and because the soil temperature isn't warm enough, the plants don't thrive. They just sit there and that's true for most of your warm weather crops. And then I would continue down the list until, you know, I mean, here in August, we've got 87 degree days, 66 degree nights. And then I do ground freeze. Yes, is the ground frozen? Yes or no? Gives me an idea of, let me get that in frame ground freezes, yes or no, gives me an idea if the ground is frozen, is there still a frost risk, I just go down the list, uh, cool crops, I just make a comment whether or not they can go in, warm crops, whether or not they can go in, and then I have some special instructions for myself, just kind of planning on when to start seeds indoors, when plants might need protection, etc. But the whole key is figuring out the average temperatures. Now you don't need a soil thermometer. You're not going out there measuring the temperatures. You're just going by, you know, this. Temperatures at the night are in the 50s. Temperatures in the day, 
76, the average for May. You're getting more warm rains. The warm rain warms up that top two, four, six, even eight inches of the soil. So we know that right in here is when that soil temperature is really going to be in the 50s. You know, upper 50s, maybe even low 60s. Putting in that three-week-old tomato transplant right in here in mid-May, that plant is going to have warm roots. It's going to grow the roots quicker, which means it's going to get greater upper green growth and the plant is going to take off. So really think about warm soil. Today is February 17th. It is too early for me to be starting tomatoes here in Maryland Zone 7. I'm doing these for prop plants so that I can make this video. These are beefsteak tomatoes started on January 30th. So that is 18 days, not quite three weeks. I'm going to be doing future videos on tips for growing tomatoes, um, some ideas on how long to grow these transplants. I'm actually going to recommend this year just four weeks and maybe another week to acclimate these to the outdoors. So five weeks for these transplants, put them into that warm soil, they are going to just take off. Now the reason being, real quick again, and I do want to stress this because it's not a new concept, but sometimes it's hard to explain and you know maybe fully understand. Tomato plants like the ambient temperature, you know the leaves feel that, but the roots also need to be in that warm soil. If the roots are not in warm soil, 50, upper 50 degrees, 60 degrees, the plants will just kind of sit there. They may even look purple. They're not going to grow. They're not going to accelerate. So spending time starting these much earlier, trying to get your tomato transplants to eight weeks, 10 weeks, putting them into colder soil, thinking you're going to get them in earlier. And sure, you can protect them from frost. You can keep them from getting damaged, but the soil temperature is going to stay in the lower 50s most likely in the 40s, these plants aren't going to take off. So they're just sitting there for the several weeks. The transplants here that you put in later, again, will catch up to these. And they're both going to look perfectly the same come really, you know, first or second week of June. So you don't have to take up space under your grow lights growing tomato transplants to be eight weeks, 10 weeks old. You don't have to start early. You can be using that, you know, space for your cool weather crops. If you feel like you get a jump late in the season, maybe you felt like you always needed eight week tomato transplants, you actually only need about four weeks. So you can start these April 1st in Maryland. Come, you know, May 1st, you got your four weeks. You wanna acclimate these to the outdoors. I always wanna throw that out there. If these are growing inside, they're not used to the UV rays of the sun. So you just, you know, move them in and out of the house slowly into the sun over a week's period. These toughen up to the sun, put them into the ground. Second week of May, your tomato transplants are gonna accelerate and take off because of the warm root system, the warm soil. You can't find this chart for your area filled out. You have to make it yourself. This is something I designed for my use and you can find it in my book, Growing an Edible Landscape. It really makes a difference. You're gonna be able to cut down the amount of space that you're using under your grow lights, the amount of time that you're growing tomatoes. Uh, peppers, I do actually recommend trying to get them to eight weeks or 10 weeks. They're a little bit of a different plant, but tomatoes, eggplants, squash, zucchini, winter squash, melons, they don't need to be grown a long time indoors. They have to get into that warm soil. And using this chart, setting it up for your area will help you set up a plan to get you know, your warm weather crop started and it's gonna make a big difference. You also don't have to put all that energy into taking care of them. If the cold is rolling in, the frost is rolling in, you're gonna be a happier garden for it. And finally, what I recommend is to experiment. Try, and I actually got this idea based on watching my self-seeding tomatoes, the ones that pop up around the compost pile. Come June, when it gets warm, the seeds just germinate, you know, naturally those tomato plants would catch up by the end of June with a lot of my transplants because they have a more massive root system. They're grown a little bit differently in nature. Another sort of mistake we make is that we really have tiny root systems when we put our transplants out. The nature sown or the, you know, tomatoes that just grow in the compost pile, they develop massive root systems first and that accelerates all the green growth. That's why they catch up to your tomato transplants a lot of times. Experiment, you know, maybe use your standard way, see how that goes. And maybe you have a system that works. If you have a system that works, there's no point in changing it. But also try growing some transplants, tomato transplants for maybe three weeks or four weeks. Put them out into that extra warm soil, maybe a couple weeks later than you normally do, 
and just watch their growth. The best way to learn in your garden is to experiment, challenge yourself, learn new ways to approach growing plants, and you should have a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and please subscribe. I'll be showing you how I take care of these tomato plants out in the garden, teach you how to grow food, have fun, and hopefully bring you some new ideas that help you have a better experience. Thanks for watching.